You look fantastic, don't you? Thank you. You're not on court about me, Dad. Well, you don't look too bad yourself. things up. You need to have some life of your own and so does she. Listen, I just don't want to get hurt, okay? Birthday next week. Yeah. Yeah, she'll be 40. I like her as a person. Mm, a little bit. <laughs> Take after me more, though. You know, I think I'm forgetting her face. I can't tell whether I'm remembering her or the photographs. Found us all right, eh? Yeah, yeah. Come in, come in. Thanks. 
Yeah, I've just become a buyer for them. Chris says we're in the sixth form. What A-levels are you doing? Sociology, biology and English. You must be clever. Not especially. I never went to university. Did secretarial training. No, Dad. <laughs> I was never the academic type. You're more a man in the soil. I got in with an alternative crowd, you know. Forget the education, and the job was uncool. You <laughs> seem to have done all right anyway. I'm never going to own a yacht. Well, I've heard yachts aren't all they're cracked up to be. <laughs> Emma, I know the situation's difficult. It's not easy for me either. But I like your dad, and I hope you and me, I hope we can be friends. Ready. Oh, you're going to the meeting? About the field trip at Wiltshire? Hello? Sorry. Dad brought his uh, girlfriend round last night. Cool. What's she like? Yeah. All right. I don't know, a bit weird though. Don't think it will last. Are you going to see her off, are you? <laughs> Hiya. You all right? Mm hmm. You have a good day? Yeah, not bad. You? Yeah. Got off early for once, made a change. <laughs> Dad, I was thinking, was there a life insurance policy for Mum? Yeah, small one. Doubt if it amounts so much. That must be worth something. Yeah, I suppose so. Because I know there's not a lot of money to spare and. I know you're not keen on me getting a student loan, so why don't we use that money? Pay for uni. It's not the money I object to, darling. It's the principal. I can't afford to put my only daughter through university, thank you very much. Yeah, but it's stupid to pay out if the money's just sitting there. You don't want to use it. You know, I don't even know if we can get access to it. Look. I know she's been gone for a long time now, darling, but... I used to say she's not still alive. I know, but we can have her declared dead legally. It's been ten years, Dad. If you did something about it in school, you can do it after seven. <laughs> but hang on a second. I mean, don't you think it's going to be a little bit upsetting, eh? I mean, for both of us, we start raking the whole thing up again. Yeah, well, I think we can safely assume she's not coming back. It'll just be like drawing a line. I want to do it before I go to uni. You know, whatever it was that made your mum leave, it wasn't you. She really loved you. Did she? Just like it said in the note, yeah? She's a good person, darling. You never doubt that. Chris? Chris Cooper! It's Dan, Gloss of Rome. Dan? Well, man, it must be ten years. Look, here's my number. I'm only here for a few days, but, but, but let's meet up, yeah? What? The house Fiona! He knew Mum? <laughs> yeah, it was ages ago. He was just one of the crowd we used to hang out with. What, did he used to live in the squat with you? Yeah, for a bit, you know, not long. Be nice to talk to him. Well, maybe we'll give him a ring, eh? Come on. Now, to get a missing person declared dead and free up the probate, 
you've got to satisfy the court that the appropriate searches have been made. Now, we use a really, really hot team of genealogists. And with the internet, I mean, there's very few places that you can hide. See, people, when they go missing, they do very odd things. You know, they often use their maiden name, or they don't change their date of birth, so they come up on a computer somewhere. It's almost as if they're leaving an avenue open. Is it possible you could find her? Well, should we put it like this? I'd be very, very surprised indeed if we didn't. Obviously, I don't want to give you false hopes, but in 95% of cases, we're successful. However, even when we find them, they don't always want contact. And that can be a disappointing, very um, upsetting experience for the relatives. Now, we can make initial contact and identification when we find her, if, if we find her. Or we can pass the data on to you, and you can contact her directly yourselves. Hey, well, we don't have to do this, man. We can just go on as we are. Why didn't you do it before? We could have found her years ago. Emma! And the police said there wasn't anything else they could do. But you gave up. You could have tried harder. You could have found her. You heard what he said. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I should have tried harder. You did try to find her, though, didn't you? Oh, go just of course I did. You know, I rang everyone she knew. I, I looked everywhere we'd ever been. But in the end, you know, you realise that if someone wants to leave you that badly, there's just no point in trying to drag them back. But it's hard to explain that to a child. I think you're right to be cautious. I don't think it would do her much good to be rejected again. She has a right to know where her mother is. She can do it herself in a few months. And what if she wants to take her to live with her? I mean, there's no knowing what she'll want. She's the mother. She'll have all the rights. It doesn't matter that Chris has put in all the hard slog bringing her up on his own. I mean, what about what Chris wants? Do you, I, I don't want her to go that way, you know, that way of life. I want her to go to university. I want her to have a future. I, I don't know. I just wanted to be happy. What's she like? Oh, we were different people, you know. We uh, cared about different things. And she never contacted you or Emma? God. That must have been hard for Emma. I think you're very forgiving, Chris. I mean, I'm no sympathy with her at all. To walk out and leave your little girl like that. Any woman who can do that, in my book, is a hard-hearted bitch. She wasn't. Yeah. I didn't hear you come in. No, I mean, I'm, I'm very sorry, Charlie. you know. She wasn't. She wasn't? You know she wasn't. some fish and chips. Get your work done? Yeah. We got the dates for the field trip. We go Saturday the 5th, back the following Saturday. Right. Let's on the board. Okay. You know where we're going, it's not that far from where we used to live with Mum. Well, I love it out there. It's a nice countryside. Will she? Do you ring that guy? What was his name, Dan or something? Yeah, I tried, you know, but... He wasn't there. They said he was going travelling or something. He seemed to want to keep in touch. Well, I'll be honest with you, darling. He was never what you call reliable. Where are you going? What's wrong with you? Want your chips? No, I'm not hungry. I'm going to bed. Well, don't even get a kiss.
Sure, if I can remember it. Let me see. Now, once upon a time, there was a little squirrel who lived in these woods on the outskirts of a, of a very big town. And one day, this little squirrel felt really adventurous, and off he set towards the town. When he got to the woods. He met the prettiest little girl in the whole world. <laughs> Do you know what her name was? <laughs> her name was Emma. Mm -hmm. Is it serious with Carol? You okay with that? Takes some getting used to. Yeah, I know. You trying to go to sleep now, right? Good night, Dad. Good night, big girl. See you in the morning, eh? Right. I love you. You love you too. Solicitor, do the identification. No, look, Dad, I know what you're trying to do, but I do not need to be protected. Look, Dad, I just want to go and see. If she doesn't want to see me, then it's fine. At least I would have seen her. I'm supposed to be going to a lunch party with Carol. I don't believe this. No, it's a nephew's christening, isn't it? Dad, they think they have found my mum, but you're going to some lunch party with bloody Carol. I'm sorry, we, we thought you were someone else, all right? Hey, hey, come on. I just wanted to be hurt. <sighs> Mr. Cooper, I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. But if we had been able to verify the identification, none of this would have happened. Now, if you remember, your daughter was very insistent. How can you make a mistake like that, eh? You said the people you use knew what they were doing. But I can't apologise enough. But the same age, the same name, both born in Suffolk. It happens. I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. But I do think it's advisable for us to make the initial contact to avoid this sort of thing happening.
You all right? I was shouting out in sleep again last night. No, it was a bad dream, isn't it? No, I really thought it was going to be her. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I really think you need to put all this behind you now. Yeah, yeah. Concentrate on your work. You've got some important exams coming up. I don't want to go back to school. Please, darling. Don't let this ruin your life, eh? explain on the phone I'm really sorry just bung those down there will you poor Emma yeah she was really upset can't have been easy for you either though think you're going to see her again after what she did did you love her yeah yeah of course I did sorry it's just this whole part of your life I feel like I know nothing about well it's a long time ago you know listen why don't we go out Get something to eat. I can't. I just think I should be here for all right now, you know? Mm. Listen, Carol. I know this ain't easy for us right now. Sorry. Hope I'm not interrupting anything. Sorry to hear about what happened. Emma! I'll give her a ring. All right, thanks. Oh, hi, yeah, um, look, I'm sorry to bother you so late. Um, I'm Chris Cooper, my daughter, Emma. Is she with you?
Why didn't you say? It's no big deal. Got to do it your first time with someone. Where's the toilet? Over there. Be in bed. All right. Where have you been? I'm fine. I'm going to bed. You're going to bed? I've been out of my mind with worry and you're going to bed? Where the bloody hell have you been? That's a friend! I'm right, friend. Oh. Don't walk away from me! His name is Nathan, okay? And what, is he your boyfriend? What's wrong, Dad? Can't you deal with your daughter having sex? It's just a team bit predictable, isn't it? Don't you talk to me! Oh. Do you understand? You bastard! You bloody bastard! Don't. Get off me! Get off me! All right! All right! All right. Sorry I lost my temper, darling. You know. It's just out my mind with worry. Come on, please. From the solicitor. Well, are you going to open it or shall I? Grandma, we're looking for Fiona. You got a letter from the solicitor, do you remember? She always did when she'd been naughty. <sighs> I feel like I know so little about her. I don't know who to ask. I don't even know what to ask. Do you know why she went away? Did she say anything to you? where she was going or what she was going to do. Grandma, she's your daughter. Please, just try and remember. I don't like the toilets here. They smell of piss. Tara's got me a good brief. He reckons I'll just be bound over. Good. Are you sure that's all it was? I didn't know you were in. Yeah, I've been to see Grandma. Right. Listen then. How much would you like? Look, before you say anything, I've decided like to go back to school, right? okay? Yeah. I want to go on a field trip. Right. That is fantastic. Part of the day to day teaching. There's a welcome talk at nine. You've got till then to unpack and sort yourselves out. Work starts in the morning.
What are you doing? Nothing. Look, I've just got to go somewhere. If any of them notice and just say... Say what? I vanished. Whatever. Come on, seriously, Emma. No, look, I'll be back by tonight, okay? Thing you're doing. They live in Birmingham. I keep an eye on it for them. All right, it's an holiday left. You want to make sure that window locks on properly. I should arrest you on suspicion of burglary. What were you doing? I used to live there when I was a kid. I just wanted to see what it was like. Can I? Can I talk to you about something? It was from there my mum disappeared. How do you mean disappeared? She went away. Without telling you? She put me to bed one night when I woke up in the morning. She was gone. I never saw her again. She didn't leave anything, um, a letter, any explanation? She left a note. And what did it say? It said, uh, it said, I love you, my darling. I'll miss you. Please forgive me. 
You know, an awful lot of people go missing, disappear. I'm afraid most of them go because they want to. If, as you say, your mum left a note. We went to a solicitor to have her declared dead. And he did all the searches, but he couldn't find any trace of her. I think maybe she didn't go away. I think maybe something happened to her. Something bad. I've been having these dreams and flashes of things in my head from the past. Oh, don't laugh. Go on. I, I don't know whether they're dreams or real things I'm remembering. I hear my mum and dad arguing. I, I think it's the night before she disappeared. Oh, I'm probably just imagining things. Emma, we'd like to hear what happens in the dreams, whether you're imagining them or not. Uh, have you heard nothing from your mum since? No uh, phone calls or birthday cards, nothing at all? No. says here your mum left a note. Have you still got the note? The police at the time took it. We used to live in a squat when I was little. I think it was in Glossop Road. We met this guy a few weeks ago. Dad said he used to live in the squat with us. He gave Dad his phone number. I really wanted to ring him, but... He knew Mum. Dad said when he tried to ring, there was no answer. <laughs> I think he tore it up. I found some of the pieces. What was the guy's name? Dan something. I didn't get his second name. So... What are you saying here? Well, if your mum's disappearance was reported, then there'll be a file somewhere. She'll be gone for good soon, you know, once she's gone to university. You can have a life. What are you scared of? I suppose I'm scared of uh, getting close to someone again, then blowing it. You can't blame yourself for what your wife did. Yeah, but I have to take responsibility for things, you know. Things not working out. No, you have to move on. You're a good dad, Chris. You've done your bit. You're allowed to have something for yourself now. <laughs> I can send you home for this. While you're here, I'm responsible for your safety. Don't leave the site again without letting me know where you're going. Where have you been? Leave me alone. It's around your cage. Hey, we're all in the bar. Do you want to come? No. No, I don't really fancy it. No. It's nice, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I'll make some coffee, shall I? Yeah, great. Uh, look, I'm just going to give him a quick call, OK? Hi, darling, it's me. Hi, Dad. <laughs> How was your day? Yeah, OK, good. Are you OK? Yeah, yeah, just at home, you know. We don't really want coffee, do we? How about... <laughs> right, well, I'll ring in a couple of days then. Bye. The girl's not completely out to lunch. Fiona Elise Cooper. 11 hours be Terrace, reported missing April 1992. Husband didn't report it straight away. She'd gone away in 1985, postnatal depression, and he thought she'd come back in a few days like she did then. Um, I was searched, found.
family and neighbours questioned alternative lifestyle. <laughs> and that's it. It's hardly a cutting edge investigation. And the note? There's no note. No mention of no note. Neighbours remembers the family. Fiona was a bit posh. They were hippies, but hey, nice hippies. They thought she was close to eight. Margaret Palmer lived at number nine. Well, her bank account hasn't been touched. National insurance number hasn't been used. She hasn't paid any tax. Doctor's never been asked to pass on any notes. And she's not using her maiden name. According to outside agency checks, Fiona Elise Cooper disappeared off the face of the earth in April 1992. Hello? Where are you? You know, in my memory, the house in Armsbury Terrace is really big. But, well, it's not. <laughs> yeah, memory does strange things. Is your dad in another relationship? He's got a girlfriend now. It's serious. Yeah. Is that recent? A few months. That must be hard. If you've had him to yourself all these years. For as long as I can remember, I've been the most important thing in his life. Yeah. It is. What was your room like in Armsby Terrace? It was colourful. Kind of ethnic. Rugs and stuff on the walls. And there was this nightlight, you know, one of those glowy plug things. I used to have one of them. <laughs> so, is there anything in the room that you particularly remember? There's this picture on the wall of a Buddha and a tiger beside it. Faces the bed is the first thing I see when I wake up. Good. That's good. I'll stay with that memory. Close your eyes. Who's in the house? Me. My dad and my mum. What wakes you up? The voices. Where are the voices coming from? Downstairs. The living room, then they move into the hall. Are they shouting? It's like a low shouting. Quiet, but really desperate. What are they saying? <laughs> it's no good, I can't hear. Go to the door. No. Just let the memories come. <laughs> Did you go to the door? I didn't go to the door. I didn't go to the door. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> To be honest with you, we've, uh, we've had some upsetting family business recently. Look, uh, I better come up there. No, 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 it's not a problem. All right, well, uh, thanks for calling. Emma's gonna.
going off somewhere. I'm going to have to go up there. Are you sure? She might not appreciate her dad coming to look for her. She is nearly 18. She's near where we live when her mum was with us. Oh, you know where she's been. She's pretty vulnerable right She might now. just need some space. You don't have to go running every time. My daughter is missing, OK? Now I'm going. How do you know that your mum left a note? My dad told me. When did he tell you? I can't remember. It wasn't straight away. I... Do you remember seeing the note? I have a picture of it in my head. I know what it said. I must have seen it. But have you ever spoke to anybody else about it other than your dad? Like grandparents, friends or neighbours at the time? I can't remember. You told us that the police took the note. How do you know that? My dad, he must have told me. What, are you sure? No! I'm not sure about anything. Look, I can't tell what I know from what I've been told. It's... It's like things that I always thought I remembered. That, things that I... I always thought I knew. It's, I just don't know what's real anymore. Listen, Emma, we've had a look at the file. Things are pretty much as you described. There was an investigation and nothing was found, but... There's no mention of a note. We're going to look into things a bit further. Emma, what kind of man is your dad? He's a good father. Has he ever been violent towards you? <sighs> He's kind and I love him. She's not come back. The mobile's still switched off. She was seen in the lane getting into a car with a man. James, he saw her. Oh. Was she all right? She looked like she was being forced or what? No, it looked like... Well, it looked like someone she was seeing. Should we call the police? No. No, we'll, uh... We'll just give her a little bit longer. Listen, Emma, um, it's really important that you don't talk to your dad or anybody else about talking to us. Can you handle that? Yeah. Well, you've got my mobile number. My name's Neil Hallam. This is Sonia Norris. Give us a ring any time. Okay, we'll be in touch. And try not to be on your own too much, yeah? She told me her dad had a serious girlfriend for the first time since her mum left. Well, that's a pretty good way of scuppering her dad's relationship with any woman, isn't it? Just suggesting he might have murdered his wife. You think she's making it up? Hey? I mean, you're not where you're supposed to be, right? No one knows where you are. Yeah. You can't blame people for getting worried. What are you doing? Yeah. Looking for where we used to live. Yeah, yeah, I was looking back in front of the house. And the guy? Or is he your boyfriend? Yeah. He's the man you were seeing back in London, right? Tell you what, why don't I take you over there? You know, we can go and see the house together. You've got no body, you've got no motive, but no evidence that a crime's been committed. What have you got? A young girl that's been dreaming, remembering, whatever you want to call it. I'm the missing note and the outside agency checks. I know they're not conclusive. Has she made a statement? No, not yet. I don't think she's ready to. No, no. no. It's too bloody airy fairy. I can't put manpower on this. The old investigation is pissed poor. You get the feeling they thought it wasn't worth bothering. If anyone decided to make a complaint... Now, look, if you think this is a runner, you've got to prove that this woman doesn't exist in any location. 
Oh, you've got to find a body. So, is this an investigation? You want to stay on board? Yeah, sure. So, have we got a team? Well, this is it. This is where we lived. Do you remember it? No. I want to come back with you. Hey, what about your work? Huh? Well, come on, you've only got two days left now. Yeah, but we've covered most of it and I can just get the notes off James. Dad, I just... I just want to go home. Come on. Um, James said this guy you've been seeing, he, he's a bit older than you, right? I don't know how to put this, but... Yeah, I mean, we never really talk about this stuff, do we? But, but sex is... Sex is important. You know, it's, it's important it's not just with anyone. It's important it's with someone you care about, you know? Someone, someone who cares about you. Especially the first time. Right. We're basically pursuing two inquiries here. We're looking for a missing person, but we're also investigating a possible murder. So keep it subtle when you talk to people. I don't want anybody blabbing to the husband that we're onto him. This is just a national review of missing persons. So, missing persons bureau, international checks, details to Interpol, and every coroner's office in the country. I want to know about every unidentified female body found in the last ten years. So, really much. if you would just make yourself at home. James, why not? You have to have that on every minute. No, no, sorry, it's mine. Oh, oh. James. No, well, well, not to worry. Oh. Hello? Emma, how are you doing? No, I'm, I'm fine. I just want to keep you up to date with what we're doing. Can you talk? <laughs> Yeah. Was it a boyfriend? Yeah, I think it is. I keep telling him not to worry about it, but you know, fathers and their daughters. We're going to be talking to your dad, but we won't mention your involvement. Or you come to the house? Uh, no, no. We'll arrange to see him at a station near you in London. You okay? Look, what if I... What if I said I'd changed my mind? I didn't want to take this any further. Well, we'd have to investigate it now anyway. We wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't. Okay. Bye. Yes, we've got one. Oh, I haven't been talking to you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's love. Start off, James, okay? James. You know what? I should take a day off tomorrow, eh? We could do something together. I see a movie or something. Can you get that? <laughs> yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. What for? Oh, right, right. Yeah, I see, yeah. <laughs> for tomorrow? It's a bit short notice, isn't it? Yeah, I've got plans for tomorrow. No, 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 that's, no, that's all right. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, I know where it is. All right, I'll see you then. Who was it? Ah, nothing important. review all missing persons cases. Yeah, the file's a bit limited on this one, to be honest, so if you could just basically put us in the picture about what happened, because we're a bit in the dark. 
before our daughter was born, we, we lived with a group of people, you know, squatted in a couple of empty houses. But as soon as Emma started school, we rented a house, just us, as a family. I suppose when it comes down to it, I'm a pretty conventional sort of guy. Although I think uh, Fiona, she was disappointed in me. Enough to walk out? To leave her child? Oh, believe me, I've gone over this a million times. Did you have any immediate arguments before she left? No. You moved to London very soon afterwards. Why was that? Well, everyone at Emma School knew, you know. I didn't want to single it out like that. And what happened to the people that lived in the squat with you? Just lost touch. I did hear that it broke up soon afterwards. Did, did your wife leave anything indicating what her intentions were? A letter, a note or anything? No. And there's been no contact of any kind in the last ten years? No. Right. Well, we'll need the names of the people who lived in the squat, just for the records. Basically, that's it. <coughs> Thanks for coming, Mr Cooper. It's a big help to us. Okay. <clears throat> um, look, are you, are you going to be talking to my daughter, you know, as part of this review? Oh, it's unlikely. She was very young. Why? Is there something? Well, it's just, um, <laughs> look, I know this is not a very sensible thing to do, you know, but as you can imagine, I, I'm sure, uh, it's very hard to explain to a little girl while her mum has just gone away and left her. So um, I wrote her a note. I told her it was from Fiona. Saying what? Oh, you know, I love you. Forgive me. I just felt she needed a little bit more explanation. You know, made the loss more bearable for her. That's very thoughtful. So where's the note now? I burnt it. I, I told her the police took it. Well, it's unlikely we'll need to speak to her. But if we do, then we'll bear that in mind. Thanks for your time, Mr. Cooper. Been to see the police. It was, uh, it was about your mum. And they're doing some kind of review of the missing persons files. What do they say? Oh, nothing new. You know, we were just going over the same old stuff. Have you, um, you had something to eat? Yeah. Did they say anything else? No. No, it's just a routine thing. Protecting his little daughter's emotional well-being. Touching. The story makes a lot of sense. But his wife walks out and leaves him to bring a kid up on his own and he didn't think it was quite fair to go after her. Please. He didn't tell us about the solicitor or meeting that guy on the tube. That hardly makes him a murderer. Do we tell him that? That he wrote the note? She knows he wrote the note. That's the bottom line of what she's saying. We need a bloody body. Figuratively speaking. He told us basically what he told you, that she went away. Do you believe him? Emma, I can't say too much. You're a potential witness. Do you understand that? I need to know. Is everything all right there? Are you going to arrest him? We're a little bit away from that yet. Are you OK? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Everything is just fine. I'll be in touch. Is she all right with him? 
She's lived with him perfectly safely for the last ten years. Now this has got a bloody stop, all right? All this sneaking around, having secrets. What can I say? You got a boyfriend, you just bring him home, let's meet him, eh? You've no room to talk. How long were you seen Carol before you told me, huh? It's none of your business, young Just lady. leave me alone, okay? Leave me alone! Look, what is going on around here? I found Margaret Palmer, the neighbour. Her husband died, she's remarried, and her name's Ellison, and she's living in Lancashire. Excellent. Is that what you were told? Yeah. That she got to live in a commune? Who told you? Chris, the husband. He told you that she'd gone to live in a commune? Yeah. Did you tell the police this at the time? Not my job to tell them. Besides, it was a while after they left. Did he happen to mention where the commune was? What? Did he happen to mention where the commune was? <sighs> it was out of a long time ago, I don't remember. Had Fiona contacted him? He said somebody told him. One of them hippie people he used to live with. Why did he tell his neighbours that his wife had gone to live in a commune and not tell us? Why didn't he tell the police ten years ago? Oh, you've decided you believe in her, have you? Norris. Thanks. What is it? They found the guy from the tube, his name's Dan Rothwell. Hiya. Didn't know you were in today. Yeah, well, neither did I. People keep changing their mind what they want. No, it's like. Do you like to come for supper tomorrow? Thought maybe Emma might like to come. Yeah, great, Carol, we'd love that. I don't know. Maybe it's not the best time right now. Is everything okay? Yeah. Lisa, I'm gonna have to go. I've got another load of stuff to pick up. I'll see you later. Yeah. Fiona was coming to join me here. Yep. But she didn't arrive. No. Nope. So when exactly was this? Look, I can't give you dates and times, man, you know. It was 10 or 11 years ago. So she was, uh, she was leaving her husband? Chris was never committed to this way of life. What about a little girl? What was she doing with her? That's one of the reasons she was going to come here. Create a better lifestyle for the kid. When she heard there was a school here, I wasn't going to crush the kid's spirit. Did you try to contact her when she didn't turn up? No. Look, there's a lot of pressure out there, you know. I guess she had been persuaded to change her mind. Is there anyone else who knew she was planning to join you? Maria. What, is that Maria Raiden? Uh, it's not here. She works for a charity in Belfast now. Look, what is this? Eh? What's all this sudden interest in Chris? Oh, it's just a nationwide review of missing persons cases. Hello. I bumped into him recently in London. Well, we're going to meet up, you know, but he uh, never calls. Right. When? 
got a body. It's a murder. She was strangled. He has a broken clavicle and guess what? You've checked Fiona's medical records. She only fell off an horse when she was 14 and broke her bloody collarbone. Yes. They got DNA? Yeah, but there was contamination. They've requested an exhumation. We're gonna nail him, the bastard! got a body. Is it really her? No, we're, we're not absolutely sure yet. We need to identify her. Listen, Emma, we're going to have to tell your dad. Now, can you cope if we come down to talk to you together? We'll only be talking about the body, nothing else. I don't know. Um... Yeah, yeah. OK, I'm on my way. Come here. Thanks for seeing us in such short notice. It's my daughter Emma. Hi. Part of our review was to put out nationally that your wife was still missing. Now, we've been contacted by the Dafford Powers Police about a body they found back in 1993, which was never identified. There's a possibility that it could be your wife. It's not clear how she died, but I'm afraid foul play was suspected. You're right, Mr. Cooper. Yeah. You're going to die. Oh, God. You sure it's her? No. We've got to identify her. We'll need a blood sample from your daughter. No, no, no. No, there's got another way to do this. Without involving Emma. We could use Fiona's mother, but it's quicker and easier to use Emma. It's called mitochondrial DNA. It passes down the female line. If this is your wife, Emma's DNA will be identical. Just tell me what I've got to do. How does she die? Excuse me. Excuse me. They think she was strangled.
It's me. I need to talk to you. Are you in danger? No. I just got to talk to you. Look, all right. It's, it's all right. I'm here in London. I'm on my way. And I could hear a strange sound. Go on. It was like an animal gasping for air. Desperate, desperate sound. I went onto the landing and I looked through the stairwells down into the hall. My father had his hands around my mum's neck. <laughs> she was the one making that horrible sound. In his face, it was just like a monster. I went back into my room and I hid under the bed. He was killing her and I hid under the bed. You were just a little kid, you know, just a, a frightened little kid. <laughs> If I'd gone downstairs, if I'd just shouted out! Emma, you're not responsible for what happened to your mum. You know, you know, it's not your fault. I could have saved her, but I was just too scared. Forget something like that, huh? No, it's not forgetting. It's just your mind putting things out of reach that are too painful. You know, all these years, I thought there was something unlovable, repulsive about me that made her leave. <laughs> I'd look everywhere for her. Wherever we went. I'd check every stranger's face in the street. Because I was sure if I just looked hard enough, I'd find her. For a while, I could remember the way she smelled. If I closed my eyes, I could feel her there holding me. He let me look for her. How could he do that? How could he do that? Do you know what it means to make a statement? What did the police say? I just said they found a body. I just said she was killed, but they didn't say how or why. They don't know how it happened. We don't even know if it was her. I'm just that they're doing some tests. I took some blood from him as well. Oh. Do they have any idea who did it? I don't know. I mean, they didn't say. They didn't say anything, really. Just said to do some kind of review of her case, you know. But didn't you tell me about all this? I was like I was going to. You know, as soon as I knew that it was her. Uh... Alone, huh? Emma? Hey, what's going on? 
Hey! No, I'm gonna have to go. Don't shut me out, Chris. Just let me help you. Look, everyone's going through a lot right now, okay? I don't know. Look, maybe it's not the right time for me and you now. What do you mean? You know, she's got a lot to deal with. Oh, Chris, no, no, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do this to yourself. You deserve it. She's my daughter. I'm all she's got. We've got her statement. We've got a goal for him. I don't think she can hold it together much longer. OK. You organise an escort there. We'll push the lab for the results on the body. <laughs> Look, I'm worried about you, that's all. Now, are you going to stay out all night? I just need to know that you're safe. So you're going to call me in future? Got a deal? Yeah, deal. Look at you, you look exhausted. Why don't you go back to bed for a bit, eh? Listen, whoever that is, I'll get rid of them. Mr. Christopher Cooper, I'm arresting you for the murder of Fiona Elise Cooper. What are you talking about? You don't have to say anything, but it may harm you Stand because you do not come mention on. when questioned. Come on, 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 come Mr. and Mrs. Edwards? Emma, are you okay? I told the police. You told the police what? What I saw. What did you see, Emma? I saw him strangle her. Uh, what do you mean? You know what you're saying. It was ten years ago. You were seven years old. I mean, what, whatever you think you saw, there's bound to be an explanation. You, you could have imagined it. You probably dreamt it. Is this about Carol? He's given up his life for you! <laughs> How can you go to the bloody police? How can you do that to your father? Leave it. Leave it. It's not her. The body. It's not bloody her. She's at the house. She's got to be at the house. He's refused a solicitor. He said he didn't kill his wife, so he doesn't need one. <sighs> Alec, bastard. We don't need to disclose anything then, do we? So you went to bed the night before. There was no argument, nothing at all unusual, and when you woke up in the morning, your wife was gone. That's what I just told you. That's what I told you last time. Why didn't you report her missing straight away? She'd gone away before. I told you this. We're going around in circles. So you carried on with your normal life for four days? Yeah, because I thought she was going to come back, all right? Well, tell me about Margaret Palmer. <clears throat> Yeah. She lived next door in Osby Terrace. Were you and your wife close to her? Not particularly, no. She, she uh, just a neighbour. Did you talk to her about your wife's disappearance? <sighs> Possibly. Possibly, yeah. Um, I don't remember. Did you go back to see people at the squat after you left? 
oh, once or twice, you know. It wasn't a regular thing. Did your wife go back and visit? No more than I did. Have you had any contact with those people since you moved to London? No. Tell me about Dan Rothwell and Maria Reardon. <laughs> well, we were friends, you know. We lived together. Did your wife have any plans involving those two? No more than I did. Did you have sex? What? Did you have sex the night before your wife disappeared? I don't remember. It would have been the last time you had sex with your wife. But you don't remember. No. Did you have a drink before you went to bed? <laughs> I don't know. What did you talk about before you went to sleep? That was your usual stuff, I suppose, you know. What exactly? Well, bills, uh, who was going to take Emily to school the next day, that sort of thing. Who went to sleep first? What? Who went to sleep first, you or your wife? Hey, oh, come on. She's ten years ago we were talking about. I don't remember. Did you argue? No. Do you have any kind of disagreement? No. You're sure about that? Yeah. Margaret Palmer's made a statement to us. She says you told her in 1992 that your wife had gone to join a commune. Oh, I may have said. That's what I thought Fiona would have done. Why didn't you tell the police in 1992 that you thought your wife had gone to join a commune? I'm sure I did say that. Yeah, I can't remember what I said. You've got to understand, right? It was a very upsetting time. Why didn't you tell us the first time we spoke to you? Dan Rothwell has told us that your wife was planning to join him and Maria Reardon at a big commune in Wales. That she was leaving you and she was taking your daughter with her. Did you know about these plans your wife had? If my wife had plans with Dan and Maria, they didn't tell me about them. Dan also told us that he bumped into you in London recently. Why didn't you tell us about that the last time we talked to you? It just slipped my mind. Thanks. No body at the house. I told her how the... I told her how the body we found was killed. When? When we went down to take the DNA sample. How bloody stupid can you get? I thought we had a body. Whether we had a body or not, you had a vulnerable witness who hadn't made a statement. You hadn't got the story. She's made one now. Yeah. After she spent the night in the back of your car. Do you know how that sounds? It's down to you, Sam. I just hope for your sake he puts his hands up. Could you say it for the tape? No, we did not have an argument that night. Well, it's strange that. Your daughter remembers an intense and angry argument between you and your wife that night. He spoke to my daughter. Why didn't you tell us about that argument, Chris? She's a minor. You can't talk to her. She's 17. You've got no right to involve her in this! Get real! This is a murder investigation! Sit down, please. Now, your daughter was woken by the argument. She crept out of bed and onto the landing. She could hear what she described as a desperate sound like an animal gasping for air. She peeked through the stair railings and she saw you with your hands round your wife's neck strangling her. She was terrified. 
She was just a little kid. She went back to her room and hid under the bed. Now this is what I think happened, and you correct me if I'm wrong. Your wife was leaving you. She was taking your daughter to live in a commune. You knew that you might never see your little girl again. And you couldn't bear that. Could you? You and your wife had a violent argument, and when you realised you couldn't stop her, you killed her. No. You didn't mean to. I understand that. You're not a psychopath. But you were losing everything. Your wife, your daughter, everyone you loved. Nobody can blame you for trying to stop that happening. And then afterwards, when you realise what you'd done, and what you'd done to your daughter, you wrote the note to try to lessen the pain for your little girl, but it didn't work, Chris. You know, Emma has gone through her life believing that she just wasn't lovable enough for her mother to stay with her. And now that she remembers everything, she's got another burden to carry. She thinks that she could have saved her mother's life if only she hadn't been so frightened. No, you're wrong. You know, you've committed two appalling crimes. You murdered your wife. But what you've done to your little girl, some would say, is just as terrible. The mare has bad dreams. You know, she must probably have a nightmare. So she's lying. Well, one of you is lying. If it's not you, then it must be her. You know, if, um, if Emma said that, then she believes it to be true. You tell us what happened, Chris. Just tell us what you were doing with your hands around your wife's neck. Did you murder your wife, Mr. Cooper? No. I know you bloody did! Now whose garden did you pour in? Had she made any mention of strangling previous to this? So your key witness remembers that she saw her father strangle her mother when she'd just been told by you that you discovered a body you suspected was her mother which had been strangled. This case was weak anyway. You've got no admissions, no corroboration of her story, no forensic, no body. All you've really got is her statement. And with the timing of the disclosure made, it means that's seriously tainted. I see no realistic prospect of a conviction. She's telling the truth, I'd swear to it. What, so we just let him walk? You wouldn't be doing her any favours taking this to court. They'd wipe the floor with her. You're letting him go. I'm really sorry, Emma. I shouldn't have told you. Apart from that, your father's denied the charge. And without a body, it's very hard to prove a crime's been committed. We just haven't got enough evidence. He's denied it. Yeah. The case isn't closed. But until new witnesses come forward or we find new evidence, we can't take it any further. She'll be staying with us for the moment, you know, until... We'll keep in touch. Goodbye, Emma. I didn't think he'd deny it. I thought that when you confronted him, he... Do you think I imagined it? Emma, I can't comment. I'm so sorry.
did to you was very wrong. Your mother didn't walk out on you. She loved you. She was taking you away from me. I didn't mean it to happen. I couldn't bear to lose you. But I know I've lost you anyway. Forgive me for this, for everything, if you can. still a lot more drama to come 